Good morning. Good morning, Francesco. Good morning, everybody who's um, Good morning, everybody. Yeah. linking in with us today. Um, uh, it's great that we can do this conversation. Um, this is, I think, the first in the program of live uh, interventions as part of uh, Me Family, which is a new digital uh, project that's been developed by uh, Madame Luxembourg, the Musée d'Art Moderne Grand Duc Jean, and which was launched uh, last week. Um, I'm delighted, uh, my name is Suzanne Cotter, and I'm the director of Madame Luxembourg, and I'm delighted to be able to have this brief exchange with Francesco Bonami, who is in fact the curator of Me Family, uh, the project, which I'll explain in a moment, uh, together with Emanuela Mazzonis and with the participation of Luigi Alberto Cipini. Um, the project Me Family actually began as an exhibition, um, an exhibition conceived for uh, Mudam, for the spaces of Mudam. And Francesco, you were invited to develop this exhibition based on an idea that you yourself had, um, which related to the iconic exhibition of Edward Steichen uh, called The Family of Man. Um, it's an exhibition that was actually presented at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1955, um, and then subsequently traveled to um, 150 museums around the world. Uh, it involved 503 photographs uh, by 273 artists from 68 countries and the sweep of Steichen's curatorial thesis was um, a kind of universalized view of, of, of humanity um, through the cycles of life from birth until death. Um, that exhibition in its exhibition form is uh, preserved and on dis permanent display here in Luxembourg in the north of the country in the town of Clairvaux. Um, so it's, a, it's an archive, it's kind of a living archive and it was this archive that um, was the point of departure for you. Um, I'd like to sort of think, ask you to talk a little bit more about that beforehand. I would just like to explain that the exhibition that you did develop for us was subsequently transformed uh, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And quite early on, I think as early as March, when the pandemic began to really unfurl in uh, here in Europe and we realized that the movement of artists and of people um, that were needed to um, realize the exhibition uh, was becoming more and more difficult. You, in fact, I remember sent an email saying, maybe in light of the content of the show and what the show is about, it should just all be digital anyway. Um, we spent a couple of months thinking about that during lockdown, looking at scenarios and then um, really exploring whether it really would be a viable thing for us to do. And if we could do it, how could we do it in a way that was substantial and somehow maintain some of the integrity or the integrity of the original curatorial project. So that we did do, and we were able to collaborate with Base Design, uh, who have studios in Brussels and also in New York, um, as well as with you and Emanuela Luigi Alberto and our curatorial and communications and technical teams here in at the museum. We also were able to bring on board the collaboration of um, all of the artists whose work is shown and who really are at the center of, of this entire project, but to create something that's we don't really talk about as an exhibition as such, but it's a platform um, for engagement. It's a platform for visibility um, uh, for their work and for users or viewers to be able to interact with it um, to some degree. So it's become another project. It's really um, been quite radical for us uh, to be able to do it, very exciting. We didn't know what to expect at the beginning. Um, we also produced a publication um, which exists alongside this platform. And that's something that also is available to um, purchase online. But back to the back to the project, Francesco, can you tell us something about um, the way you developed the, the original curatorial concept and how that sort of morphed into this project that we're really engaging with now uh, online? Well, 
Good morning, I'm Francesco Bonami, and uh, together with Emanuela Mazzones, we start thinking about this exhibition, The Family of Man, uh, 1955, and uh, it's a very important year because I was born then. Uh, so <laughs> no, I'm joking. But uh, uh, the show by Hedro Steichen at the uh, at MoMA uh, was very radical and and. And uh, I start looking into this uh, this exhibition and how it developed in that years. We are talking 65 years ago, and and uh, at that time Steichen uh, did something that to, today, is, from a curatorial point of view, is almost impossible. He took many many it was a show based on photography. There was no other medium, but it was about photography. And he took the work of a famous photographer uh, uh, of different nature and, and uh, knowledge and vision and reassemble it into this exhibition, uh, changing scale, uh, changing uh, cropping. It, it was something that some, some of the photographers in the exhibition didn't even uh, like the, the approach of Steichen, but went along with it. And the exhibition became a real experiment in 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 in, 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 in museum exhibitions. And and one thing that, that caught my attention and that the show was produced in a, a few uh, edition. I mean, it was a, and could travel simultaneously around the world. I think it traveled in eighty venues you know, uh, in 1955, all around the world, sometimes simultaneously. And again, it's something that today could, uh, could not, we could not do it. Not, not because, of course, a painting cannot be shown simultaneously in, in 80 places or even two places. A, a, a sculpture cannot be shown. But to me, it was a reflection on, on the, and the nature of art in an age that Many artists work digitally, through photography, uh, through video, through film, medium that can be actually shared simultaneously. Uh, I reflect on the idea that artists become more protective on, on their uniqueness of the authorship. So sometimes if you ask an artist, can we show this, this video here and there, they say, oh, no, unfortunately not, because the video is in two editions, and the one is there, and the other one is there, and it cannot be shown again unless you... And I, I found an on, on interesting, uh, not in a negative way, but interesting in the fact that in an age that uh, allowed to share things, uh, some artists have become more, you know, they close us, they like to share less. And that was an interesting idea that, that uh, made me think. I mean, my, our dream would have been to do something like Steichen, to do a show, a multiple show that could be uh, shown everywhere. Then COVID came and, and uh, this, this, we didn't even <laughs> went into this, this, this idea that was, would have been almost impossible to do it. But COVID came and, and I think I'm not a digital person at all. I'm not, not someone obsessed with online things and things of like that. But uh, with, with my surprise, uh, you, Suzanne, uh, came along and, and uh, start reflecting on the possibility of transforming something very physical in, as you call it, not digital, but a platform. You know, we didn't transform the exhibition in, in, in a digital version of the exhibition. We uh, uh, utterly transformed the nature of the idea into something completely different, which beca is, is becoming a platform. And I hope that people will enjoy this new, this format of talking about something. We cannot say showing about something. And, 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 and I think that, uh, I, I, I'm not here praising Mudam uh, because they they they, 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 they
first, I praise them because we present to uh, Suzanne the idea with uh, Manuela. I want to just do a little note. Steichen was originally from Luxembourg. And there is a museum of the family of men near uh, Luxembourg, so uh, which is fantastic. And I encourage everybody, uh, even during lockdown, if it's open, to go to visit the museum of the family of men because it's a fascinating uh, place with uh, some original pieces of the original exhibition at MoMA. So it, it is really a, 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 an amazing experience. So that that I will encourage. But you know the link with Steichen and Luxembourg was very strong, and and Suzanne liked the idea and for the exhibition. And after she was able to uh, push this other uh, idea of the platform, which I mean uh, it could sound normal, but it's not. A lot of a lot of institution during COVID postponed indefinitely or bluntly cancel exhibition and I understandably and and Mudam instead wanted to go along with with the exhibition uh, on another dimension and and we succeeded with all the help of everybody I mean this effort would not have been possible without the involvement of uh, everybody you know, uh, the, all the curator, uh, the marketing, the, everybody in the museum, Emanuela Mazzoni, uh, Luigi Alberto Cipini, all the artists that have been involved. And this is, it's, uh, I mean, it sounds idealistic, but I don't see anything wrong in a moment like this to be a little bit idealistic. I think it was a very a collective effort where in a way, you know, <coughs> we all joined forces to produce something quite experimental and, and quite fascinating. If it will work, if it will be a success, well, that's part of, of the, the experiments are beautiful because allow the possibility of, of uh, exploring new venue and exploring new way of failing, new way of succeeding and things like that. So I, I think that, that it's, and, and what we're doing now is also one of the little fragments of this experiment. And I think we, we prove that in a moment of crisis, we can still do something uh, uh, which is propositional. We can propose something and we don't sit back and wait the crisis to finish. I mean, we, as a, we use this banality. You never uh, waste a crisis, you know? And I think that we can say that we didn't waste a crisis. I mean, Francesco, for a couple of points. I mean, one is, um, I mean, thanks for your um, your really kind words about uh, us and all the team, but, you know, part of the process of uh, reflection about what we would do was sort of, we didn't want to go through a period of mourning, let's say. We did go through a little period of mourning about the exhibition when we realised we had to take the decision not to go ahead with the physical exhibition. But I, as a director, was really bolstered actually by many of the younger members of the team at Mudam who we were during one of our weekly Zoom afternoon teas during the lockdown here in Luxembourg. We talked about it and I said, well, this is what we're going to do, you know, we're thinking about. And a number of the, um, a number of colleagues, young, the younger colleagues, you know, in different services said, but we're doing all this work, we're thinking about the digital, you know, it would be wonderful if we could do it. So they were really, I think I was encouraged by them um, because they sort of really saw the potential. So I think that, you know, knowing that there was a jet, there was a dispersed energy and will to sort of take it through. But um, I also, uh, you know, other things, I think what's interesting about the platform and I've spent time going through it all, um, is how, I mean, I've been so uh, impressed really myself uh, by how much the work that is on the platform engages you and the ideas of the artists. And at times I felt very moved watching it. And I noticed one of, our, one of my colleagues here, Eve Hoffman, talked about how many people that he knows who sit outside of the art world who are not regular museum visitors, 
have, because of the communication around the platform, had been engaging with it and were very, very comfortable with it because people are used to um, sitting in front of a computer screen and they're more comfortable watching a lot of the durational work because a lot of the work on the platform is uh, film and animations and it's durational. They're much more comfortable engaging with it on the screen than they might be in going into a museum and into a big spatial installation. So that, you know, that's, I think that's an interesting feedback. But I wanted to also pick up on your point um, what you, when you were talking about Station's exhibition itself. And I remember when we went to Clairvaux to visit it together, um, must be two years ago now. Really? And although you knew about it, you'd not actually visited it um, where it is uh, held here in Luxembourg. And I remember you being struck by the fact that Station had worked with photojournalists. And you know, you mentioned the radicality of, of the exhibition, but the fact that Station himself was a photographer associated with pictorialism and the 291 gallery and modernity and you know, photography, photography's history uh, um, uh, and its evolution in being recognized as a fine art medium to be doing this exhibition where he's working with um, journal, photojournalists. So he, there was a kind of promiscuity um, uh, that's uh, embodied in this particular exhibition. And it struck me when looking through, going through the platform and engaging with the many different works that you and Emanuela sort of selected for, for me family, um, that there is a similar kind of promiscuity, even though we're, we can engage with all of this by way of digital technology, we're looking at very different forms. So we have this more pure, let's call it video in the work of Doug Aitken, which is amazing on screen. I mean, we think yeah. of Doug Aitken's work, experiencing it really in this immersive, very physical corporeal way, but actually it's still incredibly compelling when you view it on screen. But then you have other artists who are working with game technology. I'm thinking of Garam Kim's amazing um, videos. Um, uh, uh, Harun Faroqi, who's is kind of a forensic drilling down into yeah. the history of um, visualization with tech, with the development of technology, but contains within it certain, I think, critical ref reflections, or it encourages you to have them. So um, I wonder if you could just say something about your the selection of artists who are actually participating in, in this project. Well, uh, again, we didn't want to do a remake of the Family of Man, and and so, but we uh, reflected on the um, nature of the exhibition, and as you talk about the the, the word promiscuity between uh, uh, more art photography and uh, photojournalism. And I think we have been more, uh, we became more and more sectorial in, in terms of uh, uh, selection of works in the preceding, in the last 65 years. Uh, before there was photojournalism, pho there was photography. And within photography, I think there was uh, photojournalism, there was uh, fine art photography, but they were not, the boundaries were not so clear and divided. I think that, I don't know, uh, but I don't think that Steichen was looking down to photojournalists when he was including his division, was he looking at, you know, a little bit like uh, a painter can look at abstraction or figurative or photorealism, uh, not, not uh, looking down, but as part of the same language, but uh, with variation. Uh, it's like music. Uh, today, we are a little bit more sectorial, as I say. And, and, and so we were trying to uh, uh, look at an exhibition that was experiential, that was uh, more up to time with, with the real world that we live now. I mean, a lot of young people, uh, See reality through digital media, through digital uh, tools, uh, through, through computer, media, tele telephones. And so we are thinking that maybe the way to pay an homage to the family of men was to look at through this medium. So we limited, actually, we almost excluded completely classical 
uh, two medium like a sculpture or, or a painting or something because we thought that that would be uh, interesting to create an exhibition where the viewer was experiencing and with the help of Luigi Alberto Cipini for the installation we had conceived a show where you could go and simultaneously even listen to the sound of different video and then be able to focus on, on each of them individually. But at the same time, we were stressing the cacophony of, 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 of the exhibition as a reflection of the cacophony of the world. Yeah. So that's the way we, we approach the show and the selection of the work. And we have to say that most of the artists really went along with that and uh, it was a, a refreshing uh, um, way to, 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 to see a show. And then, you know, because of the nature of the show, I think that uh, that's why we are even into these circumstances. We are able to be here because, uh, and, and, and I want to stress it, what we did with the platform is not, a replacement of the exhibition. Oh. Uh, going to a museum as uh, it will be, and I, I really uh, am adamant about it, will always be a unique experience. Crossing the threshold of the museum, the symbolic space, like crossing the threshold of the theater, crossing the threshold of the movie theater, uh, will never be replaced by any digital thing, you know? Uh, I think that comes across too in the platform because, for example, there are certain artists who participated but whose work was actually physical, such as I'm thinking of Simon Fujiwara, Zen Pitiwara, yeah. or the installation we were planning with Rudolf Stingel. Um, so on the platform you can see stills of different um, installation views of these yeah. works as they've been presented um, in different places. And I... I find it interesting because they're, you could say they're a kind of document, they're not, they're a representation, but they don't pretend to be, this is the work. And in some ways, I, I, I like the fact that they say, well, you really would have to experience this in, in the place, in physically and in real time. So um, it's not trying to uh, translate work into the digital medium, say, yes, you too can experience it. So I think it speaks to that point. I mean, we hope to, we hope to, to enhance uh, uh, also the desire, you know, exactly. uh, to, to, to see things. I think it's, a, it's something that we all have experienced in our life, to see an image of a famous work of art and having this, desire to go to see it in real life and so yeah. we hope that that this will 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 even for the work that cannot be really uh, given the, the whole uh, not even the whole not even the, uh, the, the 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 taste of what it is in real life but give only the uh, as you say it's not a documentation just an hint of what the world could be in real life. Yeah. We hope that the people will, will in, want, will increase the desire to go into the physical museum to see certain things that in the platform are just, let's say mentioned, but, but cannot be really offered in the, uh, in the fair capacity of, of an experience like Rudolf Singer and Fujiara. So I, I think that, that uh, the, the platform become also a kind of a teaser for the real experience of yeah. those works or maybe other works. And then now, you know, there is a, the permanent collection of Mudan that, that would have been part of the family, me family exhibition yeah. that, that can be uh, seen and visited. Uh, and so great. I think that, that uh, and was installed with, uh, with an idea by the uh, um, Cipini studio uh, I, uh, the installation, design. Design is installation. So I think that also there we, we people can see have a, have a taste of what what uh, what can be done with with within the real space of a museum in an innovative way. And and to this full credit to the Mudam 
to you and also to your team that, that came along. I, as you know, I, I've, I've worked in museum and I've worked in, uh, in, in, in institution uh, as a freelancer. And, and I, I have to admit that I always found certain resistance in, in changing the rules and the pattern of, of, uh, of exhibition making. And in this case, I mean, I, I found a sad a total uh, porosity, uh, porous uh, environment, uh, uh, willing to accept the, not my idea, but the circumstances yeah. and, 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 uh, and shape them into something that we hope is going to be strong enough to sustain the idea. I think this idea of porosity is, I was thinking exactly the same word, actually. I think it's really important. And that if we think of the project of Me Family as being tremendously porous, I mean, I think we have five minutes to go before we're going to close off. But I did also want to just highlight the fact that in terms of um, the work that people can access um, on the platform, you know, among the many artists whose work is there um, and projects such as the display, the permanent collection display here in the museum. Um, we have works by artists such as Sofia Almeria, who is this sort of incredible, almost abstract work, but based on her and her sister walking through Dubai Mall. And Lara Baladi's um, amazing work, which is sort of based on her archives of the Egyptian revolution and its aftermath. And for which as an accompaniment to um, a kind of representation of that work where there's also a portal into the archives she's been developing since 2011, all of the, you know, the revolutionary protests um, in Tahrir Square in Cairo, um, this very, very beautiful animation called A Lesson in History. So the platform is also, you know, there's this porosity in that there are things that are presented, it gives you desire, there's things you can engage with, and there are works that have been made especially for it. And I think as a result of this sort of program, eight and a half as well, there'll be other content, such as our content, but conversations with some of the artists that will continue to feed it. I mean, perhaps just a final point, we have three minutes, but maybe from, to hear from you, Francesco, you know, to go back to, you know, Station's project, which I think is recognized as a, a was a universalizing portrait or an attempt um, to offer a universal portrait of humanity in the post-war nuclear age. I mean, this project, Me Family, it's not less affirming in that way. You mentioned earlier this fact that it was really about the reality of now. And that reality of now is anything from certain. We cannot sort of pit, we cannot sort of place all of humanity and their loves, desires, loves, needs, disappointments, all within the same compartment. I think, um, you know, and again, I think in relation to the idea of the digital or technology, that it's not a panacea. Um, it's not the answer. It's not the solution to everything, but it's part of a bigger set of possibilities. I just would like to hear from you on that before we say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not a panacea. It's not, it's not a cure. It's not a solution. It's not a uh, replacement. And, and uh, it's... Uh, in a way more realistic uh, uh, way to, to look at the world with all the ups and downs. Nothing is taken for granted. While I think uh, Steichen was more, in a way, idealistic, romantic, and also a little bit paternalistic. I mean, if we look at the show of Steichen today with a cynical eye, we could say that that was a little bit something like someone, I don't remember who called it, like National Geographic pornography. In, in the sense that we look at the world as this, you know, where poverty become folkloristic, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, stress and pain uh, become kind of uh, visually interesting. It was more the kind of, you know, uh, kind of photography. Today, we are much more aware of the, of the pains and, and, uh, and uh, uh, in, in inequality and injustice of the world. So we cannot look uh, with the same eyes that I can look at those things. We have to be very uh, aware of that, very realistic, very respectful, and, and, and we cannot just take the world and make it, turn it into our, uh, our as I say, National Geographic <laughs> curatorial yeah. experience. We, we have to say, I think that was a good, good uh, 
good experiment and good experience for us curator and I hope for the Mudam to 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 see how how you look at the world. Is the, the name is me family because today we look at the world from our own individual point of view to the social media, Instagram, Facebook, and all this, Twitter. But to to stress the idea of the platform is that the platform it's uh, allowed in a way the viewer to have uh, entered the idea of the former exhibition as uh, more more uh, intimately and 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 we the viewer can embrace the show and put his voice or her voice or their voices into something quite new that is something that in a museum cannot really do you know people cannot they are not not allowed, but they're not, they don't feel comfortable to start voicing their, you know, their enthusiasm or their protest against the work of art. You know, they feel intimidated. The platform is, I hope, less intimidating. And we hope that uh, uh, the viewer uh, feel that way, respecting the platform. That's a, that's a message to the viewer. We respect the viewer, the viewer should respect the platform and not find it a way where they can voice any possible, <laughs> you know. That's, I think, uh, I look at things positively. Let's, I think, the great positivity of, the, of, of today's world, of the me family, as that the social media are very dangerous, but at the same time, they, for who can use it, develop a great sense of responsibility. What we say is our responsibility. So we can be angry, we can be happy, we can be... But it's our responsibility. What we say as curator, as viewers, as director of museum, is our responsibility. There is no safety net. We say something on the platform, you say it is there, and you have to take full responsibility of what you do. So I think it's an encouragement to the viewer to participate, but to, to participate in a responsible way as, you know, as, as, as responsible. We are all responsible. I think it's the show, if we can stress the last message of the exhibition, the Me family should be an, an attempt to stress responsibilities uh, uh, in any form and shape we can uh, envision responsibilities, artists, curator, everything. So no. I, I really look, I hope that people will enjoy this, this this way of understanding uh, uh, art and the responsibility toward art and of art toward the people. Yeah. Francesco, thank you so much. It is, thank you I think again. To end now, but it's been fantastic speaking with you and thank you for this. Thank you very much to everybody. Amazing thank project. You. Thank you for challenging us to thank you. go ahead. Have a great day. Thanks to everybody thank listening.